Hey everybody, it's Peter, and in this video we're going to cover the 650 V-Strom and we're going to compare it to the 800 V-Strom. And although there are a number of spec differences, we're not necessarily going to cover every spec difference in this video. What we're really going to cover is the practical differences between these two bikes, and I'm going to try to help you decide which one's best for you. So part of doing that is understanding our own biases. Certain people with certain biases are going to prefer certain vehicles. For instance, if you love sports cars, a Ferrari is going to appeal to you more than a minivan. But if you have have to get your family of five around or six around, a minivan is going to appeal to you more. So we're going to talk through which bike might be better for you based on some practical things, based on how things feel and look and work. And we're also going to touch on some specs. And if I don't answer every question that you have, by all means, feel free to let me know in the comments below the questions you have about these bikes. I will be doing a riding review in the summer when they uh, when I have the chance to get these back out. We're filming here in December of 2023. These are both 2023 bikes, but we will be having the 2024s as well. And I'm filming here at McLean Sports. So if you have questions, McLean Sports is amazing. They're here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and they give me complete access to their entire bike lineup. In fact, I've already done a complete review of the 650, a complete review of the 800, and this review won't really overstep on what those have already done. What we're gonna really try to do is compare these two together. So again, lots of content on these bikes and I'm willing to do more. I wanna thank McLean Sports for giving me access to all of their vehicles so that you can get the answers you need. And if you're in Fredericton, New Brunswick, or if you're anywhere in New Brunswick, make sure you swing by this store. The link is in the description of this video. You can check them out there. Let's get going with this comparison. So the first thing we got to talk about is the fact that the V-Strom was named for their 90 degree V-twin engine. There's the 650 and the 1050, so basically the 650 and the 1000 cc bike. But now this new 800 steps in and it keeps the V-Strom name, but it's not a V-twin, it's a parallel twin. So there's gonna be some differences there. We'll talk about the engines, that kind of thing. It doesn't really matter to a lot of riders, but some people are going to say, hey, that makes a huge difference. So there is a difference in the way those engines will feel. There is a difference in the way they perform. So this one's an 800 cc. It's actually just under 800 cc. And the way they get there is by a larger bore and a larger stroke. So again, cc's are measured in the uh, cubic centimeters, the volume of the engine. And basically, you can have a larger piston or you can have a piston that travels farther and that will give you more cc's, more cubic centimeters, more volume in the engine. So basically, this engine has both a larger piston and it travels farther, but it's a different layout. So that kind of, you know, sets up as very different bikes as far as the engine goes. Now, from a riding perspective, they still hit the same class. They're going to still appeal to basically the same market. We're going to talk about advantages of each one over the other. But 650 versus 800, a couple other things you have to be pay attention to when we talk about biases. One of the really strong pieces of the 650 is it has been incredibly reliable in the motorcycle industry. So the V-Strom fan base really points to the reliability and that's a real strong piece of the 650. So what you'll have is a few extra people biased to not buying a brand new bike because this is a brand new engine. Now the flip side is that brand new engine gives you a little bit extra technology. So this uh, engine not only is a different format, it also has a higher compression ratio and those are all things you may want to factor into your things. If you like newer technology, you're going to get that on the 800. If you want to stay away from newer technology and you want to stay with old reliables, I would say, the 650 may be something that you lean more towards, but there are those biases out there. Personally, I would not shy away from this bike in any way because it's new, but I do like the 650 for certain reasons as well. So let's start digging through some details. Let's talk about a couple differences other than the engine, and we're going to start by the front wheels and compare those because that's really where one of the key differences comes in. All right, if you've watched my reviews before, you always know that I like to go to the front wheel because this talks about the intention of this bike, the purpose of this bike. And really what you're ending up with is a couple minor differences. There's some style difference here, the uh, both discs here. This, it's a dual disc bike here on the front. And this one has a little bit more of a pedal style around the outside. You can see the other one in a second, it doesn't have those pedal styles. To me, that's a style thing. Some people will say it helps dissipate heat a little bit better. I don't know that that's necessarily the case for a bike in this class. You're not taking it to the racetrack. So you got the ABS ring, you got the standard style, brakes. The big difference here is the 21 inch wheel compared to the 19 inch wheel. So that indicates maybe a little bit more off-road ability. Some people will say that this won't handle necessarily as well because it has a little bit bigger wheel. Again, 
I think that's kind of uh, something that makes a difference at really high speeds, uh, racetrack type thing, or, uh, or really low speeds, I guess. But um, really that 21 inch wheel on this chassis, I think works just fine. You're gonna feel that both of them are very rideable. The biggest difference here is you have the upside down forks. Now, what does that do? What does that do? The upside down forks give you a little bit less unsprung weight. They also give you fully adjustable forks. So that is, again, there is a price increase to go to the bigger engine, which is common throughout the motorcycle industry, but you're also getting, in addition to the bigger engine, a little bit more of an upgraded fork. So upside down forks are gonna give you more stiffness up top. They're gonna give you some of that adjustability, less weight or less unsprung weight, which in theory could give you a little bit better performance. So that's where some differences start to head out. Let's just quickly show you the 650 as well, just so you see some of the differences. So taking a look at the 650 here, you have a couple key differences here. Again, that 19 inch tire, you've got a different brand of tire. And the other thing is this is a tubeless tire, whereas it's a tube tire on the, uh, on the um, 800. So real big difference really is just that. Now some people will have a strong preference for one or the other. Other people won't care, but it is worth noting that that is one of the differences. Again, you can see the right side up forks here. So again, a little bit less advanced suspension here uh, without the adjustments and being the sort of the right side up suspension. I don't think it's a problem for again, this class of bike, but if you do want that adjustability, you've got to go to the 800 versus this bike right here. So we've talked about the front wheels, indicating that the 800 is probably a little bit more off-road focused. Now let's look at the dimensions because there's another dimension here that also shows us that they may be a little bit more off-road focused. So basically length, it's a couple inches longer on the 800, width it's a couple inches wider, and the height is actually higher on the 650. We'll talk about that. I believe that's just the windshield. We're gonna talk about that when we hop on the bike. And then wheelbase is an interesting thing because wheelbase is really what affects handling. There's only 0.4 of an inch, so 61.4 inches on the 650, 61.8 inches on the 800. So wheelbase is actually very similar between these bikes, which means that from a rider feel, it shouldn't feel a whole lot different um, in, in sort of the way they work. It shouldn't feel that much bigger. So while the 800 is a bigger bike, we'll talk about how that feels from the spec sheet, from a wheelbase perspective, it shouldn't be that much harder to handle. A couple inches here or there sometimes doesn't matter, especially if it's not in the wheelbase, if it's just bodywork or something like that. Where there's a difference in these bikes, and this is where that on-off-road uh, difference makes or shows up, is in ground clearance. So the ground clearance is 6.7 inches here, 8.7 inches on the 800. So two inches different ground clearance, but seat height is within less than an inch of each other. So while they do give you extra ground clearance there, and the seat is taller, it's not two inches taller like the ground clearance. So now what I'm gonna do is hop on these bikes and talk about the riding position and the differences between the two of them. So I've spread the bikes out a little bit so you can get them both in the same shot so you can see how my feet position is, how my leg position is, everything else uh, when we hop on the bike. I'm about six feet tall, in seam I gotta look up, call it 32, 33-ish, I'm not 100% sure, but around six feet tall, proportional. So we're gonna hop on the 800 first and I will tell you the 800 feels a little bit heavier and definitely feels a little bit bigger, but there's an exception there. First of all, easy to get on for someone my size. You've got the same size fuel tank in both, so there's, you know the weight up top is gonna be basically the same same, you know, whether you fill it with uh, gas on one or the other, the 20 liter fuel tank. So that's good range. Now you've got a big wide seating position here. You can see with my leg up here, very square position. I really, really like this class of bike for the square upright seating position, but you do have some key differences. We're going to show you the dashes in a second. This is a digital dash. That one's not, or a TFT display. One of the big differences you're going to notice though, is the windshield is quite far away from you here and quite small. So that's something that a lot of people have talked about. Now I found riding some of these bikes in the hot weather that sometimes these big windshields make it just too hot to ride on the really hot days but this one would give me some wind protection for you know tiredness that kind of thing to keep me you know keep me from getting fatigued but it does definitely have a more open feel here than on the 650 so that's one of the key things you're going to notice there so there's the riding position there you can see my feet here i'm about uh, level on the bike there still tippy toed i can't quite flat foot um, very comfortable position i feel very much in control but again it's not a you know lower bike it's not a cruiser you are sitting taller very commanding riding position very good so that's the 800 now what do i notice when I jump over here, and this is one of the key things. This bike feels, for whatever reason, to be a little bit more approachable. I am flat-footed on this, so even though there's a point whatever difference in the uh, seat height, obviously the seat shape is different, and I can flat-foot. Now, I am just slightly sort of um, you know, up on my toes a little bit, 
but this bike feels just a little bit lower. So again, even though this one's lower to the ground and it had only you know, less than an inch different in ground or in seat height, it feels different. So again, putting my leg up here feels very same. Again, a little bit more of a lightweight feel and definitely more protection. This windshield feels a little closer to you and definitely comes up higher to me. So that's gonna give you more natural protection. Now you could add an extra screen there. It's still a little bit further away. And again, wind, you know, the way the wind hits you is different, but with the hand guards on both and the windshield, you're gonna have probably a little bit more wind protection on this. I think you'll have more wind protection for your legs on that bike because it feels here like my knees are out in the open where my knees are a little bit more covered on that bike but that's one of the key differences. Overall seating, both very comfortable. I could ride either one all day. There's a chance that one feels a slight bit more comfortable to me, but neither one is going to be you know, more or less. I think it really depends on who you are. The mirror shape is also quite different. You have a square mirror here, a little bit longer elongated mirror there. Either one, they're both clear in my shoulders and out of the way, so no real issues that way. Another thing worth talking about on these bikes is the face of the bike. And it's not just sort of the styling and the shape, it's also lighting because lighting has a real practical component to how you ride, where you ride and what you ride. So there is a styling difference, but there's also a key difference in the way the lighting works. Now, it may be harder to see, I'm looking at my watch because that's where my viewfinder is. There is a little daytime running light type light up here. There is a little bulb that's kind of a daytime running light light up there. You have the incandescent bulb on the 650 on the larger light, and then you have these dual LED lights here on the 800. Uh, those are gonna have a little bit sharper cutoff and a little bit more precision to them than on this um, traditional incandescent uh, style bike. So the face is different. The other difference you have is in the signal lights. You have LED signal lights over here and on the 650 here, you have just the traditional incandescent bulb. So there is a bit more of a modern feel here. I think the whiter light probably gives you a little bit better beam pattern and certainly a whiter, brighter light. One of the benefits with the whiter lights, I've been in the auto industry for a while, I talked to people about this, that white light is closer to daylight color. And what that means is that it'll help your brain kind of identify because your brain's kind of used to seeing things in daylight color. Uh, you can, I always say you can tell the difference between a raccoon and a rock. In other words, something that's gonna stay put and something that could move out in your way. So a little bit better lighting here. Again, more expensive bike, you're getting better suspension, bigger engine, a little bit better lighting as well. Makes kind of some sense there. I'll show you the rear of the bike briefly again. No LED signal lights on the 650. You have a red light here and a clear light there. Now the angle isn't filming very well, but they're both looking very red in real life. I'll turn the bikes off for a second so you can sort of see this one is when it's parked, has a little bit more white light. It's in other words, clear. And this one of course is red. They're both LED taillights. So you have the instant on taillight. There is a difference in the way the shape of the rear fender comes along here. Uh, if you're not getting a fender eliminator, which on these bikes is not very common compared to something like a sport bike, you have a little bit more coverage on the 650. I think than you do on the 800. The shape is definitely different. To me, this one gives a little bit more coverage on the 650. Now we should look at the racks here because this is something that you use on a bike like this. So let's move in closer and we'll take a look at those. So starting here on the 650, both of these racks are rated for 22 pounds. Now I know we all sort of talk about ratings on these kind of things. Sometimes people are gonna put a little extra weight on here, but I have to talk about the rating just so you can see that they're essentially built to the same standard. Now this one has a lot more sort of grooves and other components there on it. Uh, a couple little things worth noting is even if you don't buy accessory racks or accessory accessories, accessory accessories, uh, extra pieces to put on this, you still have from the factory these little tie down uh, loops there that uh, give you something to tie down to in addition to all of course the loops in there and the rear handles right there. Now we're gonna jump across the 800 to show you the difference. Practically they're the same, but uh, they do have a style difference. So over here on the 800, I'm filming from a little different angle. You still have the tooth down here and the tooth down there, the same thing that you would have to tie down, but a little more flat, plain uh, area there, a little less uh, style there. One thing you will notice on both, you can see over there and over here, you basically have a level spot, a little bit of a jump up on both from the rack over to this seat. And what that does is it really allows you to use that seat as part of your luggage area to tie things down with these handles on both. So you have a little extra tie down area, maybe a duffel bag or something like that you can put right across that rear seat. And that's part of the design of these bikes to give you some practicality with the luggage. Take a look at the dash of both these bikes. That's another real big difference. Again, the 650 is still sort of modernized here, but the dash is still a little bit older looking certainly than the um, 800. Now I'm gonna just try to show you in the bottom corner of your screen right here, there is a 12 volt port down here on the 650. You don't have that standard on the 800. So I'm gonna kind of hide it with the handlebars there as I uh, just sort of tilt things up. Again, both bikes have a uh, handlebar here that you could add accessories to. Uh, again, the 12 volt port is standard there. This is a little thinner handlebar here than on the 800. 
500, so that's something that may not show up in video. I don't know if that matters to anybody, but your, your accessories from one, if you have the exact same, if you want, want to have the exact same handlebar, it is a different handlebar moving from a 650 to an 800. Now let's zoom into the dash. We're gonna turn the bike on here just for a second, just to the on position without starting it up, just to give you a sense of what's in there. Kind of your standard multi-information display here. I could go through a whole bunch of things, but you have kind of the same stuff. Now you do have traction control on this bike. That's worth pointing out. Traction control on both bikes. Uh, you have your speedometer here, your gear indicator there. All the information you kind of need, but it's displayed in the more traditional non-TFT display. Uh, also having a uh, you know traditional tachometer, revs to 10,000 RPM on this bike. Um, again, a lot of your torque in this is going to be in the mid-range and the parallel twin, although a lot of parallel twins have uh, power in the higher end range, it is also tuned for mid-range power. So the feel of these bikes is going to be similar. Uh, obviously the 800 is going to be stronger. That's that uh, more displacement, the higher compression ratio, uh, you are gonna get a little bit more power. But as far as the actual dash information goes, it's very similar. Let's just quickly show you the other dash now. So taking a similar view on the 800 here, again, thicker handlebar by far, a little bit more of a texture to it uh, all the way through. So again, bigger through here, thins out up over here. I'm gonna turn the dash on, and this is where you see that real technology difference. You really feel like this is a newer bike. You have that TFT display. So we're gonna zoom into that. Again, a lot of the stuff is the same here. You have a traction control uh, system right there. One of the differences here though is a quick shifter and the ride modes. You have those uh, Suzuki ride modes type thing. Uh, ABS, you can change the little bit around as well. Uh, the tachometer is actually smaller, but still a dial. So a lot of people say, hey, I really want that traditional, um, you know, old fashioned style tachometer. This one reads the exact same way. The red line's a hair lower, 9,500 instead of that 10,000 RPM. Uh, but it, it's very easy to read. I will say that the tach is a little bit smaller here than you have on the 650, but the rest of your information is probably a little bit clearer to read, a little easier to read. I'm filming in an area with a lot of glare. Cameras show a lot more glare than your your eyes see so even though you can see my reflection there you can see that it's very easy to read even with the glare and the reflection so a couple of the things like I said quick shifters on this a little bit more of a throttle um, uh, throttle settings with that uh, Suzuki's uh, sort of you know ride mode type thing and then again the other thing you, you see from the riders environment if we come back and go sort of the standard angle a little bit lower windshield you still have this bar up here so you could put an extra accessory uh, mounted up there um, now I said there was no um, um, there was no USB port or no 12 volt port but there is a USB port over here so there's my mistake right there I'll try to show you there is a USB port on the side there I'll show you that in one second so you do have the ability to add uh, those accessories just in a different way again that more modern style with the USB and uh, again just to, sort of depends on what you want to do. So just to be clear, you can put accessories on both, a 12 volt port on the uh, 650 and an eight, or sorry, a USB port on the 800 right on the side right there. We'll zoom into that so you can see that, just a standard uh, USB uh, A, not a USB C or anything like that. But again, a little bit off to the side, but it works very well. And actually it's a little bit more hidden and out of the way uh, maybe than the 12 volt port, which is on the front of the uh, 650. So now let's help you decide which of these two is better for you. And it can really kind of vary on what your biases are. For me, again, looking at the spec sheet, I never would have thought the riding position felt so much different, but this one feels a little bit more familiar and a little bit more approachable. Now that could be because I rode the competitor to this for a number of years. I had the Versus 650, which is from Kawasaki. It's not as off-road capable, but it is a very similar bike to this as far as feel. This one does, to me, feel more approachable. Now. From a value perspective, the 800 really does add value. It gives you that quick shifter. It gives you the better headlights. It gives you the adjustable front suspension. They both have preload adjustment on the rear, so you still have some preload adjustment if you're putting passengers or gear on the back. But it also gives you things like that TFT display. To me, I like those things. I also like the little bit smaller windshield that gives me a little bit more airflow and the option to put a bigger windshield on to have a little bit more protection. But the 800 does feel like a bigger bike to me. Those two extra inches of ground clearance really don't make a difference in the seating position, but it does feel taller, even though it's only less than an inch difference in seat height. It feels like a bigger, heavier bike to me. It's not something that would be intimidating to me, but it is worth considering because it does feel like a little bit bigger bike, and it is. And they had, uh, Suzuki had the freedom to do that because they decided to stay with the 650. So which one is best for you? This engine proven, this engine new. I don't have any concerns about the reliability of either one. They're gonna use that engine in a whole bunch of things, but that is something we're considering. Where I think the 650 shines is this class in general is the perfect single rider do everything. If you're starting to add a second rider and go touring on this, that's where I think you might want a little bit extra power. Now. 
That being said, this one can handle two riders for a weekend jaunt. It can handle, or two, you know, rider and passenger for a weekend jaunt. It can handle all kinds of things. But if you're gonna constantly ride with two people, then there's that 1050 V-Strom, and that's really the best option for two passengers all the time. Where I say that this bike is best as a single rider thing is because when you put a second rider on here, it loses some playfulness. And that's really where the 800 is gonna shine. It's gonna maintain that playfulness, whether with a second rider, whether with a little bit extra gear, or even without, it's just a little bit more playful and has great value. So there's my summary of which bike, you know, is best for you and uh, which one would I choose? Although I love the feeling of this from familiarity, to me, I think it's so familiar because I rode the competitor to this. And I think that's why, you know, my, my heart kind of feels like, yes, this feels like at home. To me, I would spend the extra money and I think there's value in going to the 800. But I said that because I moved from a 650 bike to a 950 four cylinder bike. I like having that little bit extra power after having rid a six, ridden a 650 for years. If you're on a budget, this one is going to keep you super happy. If you have a little bit extra budget, the 800 is absolutely worth considering because it gives you that little bit more and I think there's value there. So there's your review. Again, if you wanna see these bikes in person, they are here in December of 2023, right here at McLean's. You can check out motorcycles, even in the middle of winter when there's snowmobiles everywhere, you can check them out now. You can put your money down on it and have it ready to go for spring, whatever you want. But if you're in Fredericton, New Brunswick or anywhere in New Brunswick, check McLean's out. There's a link in the description. And if you wanna know more about these bikes and I haven't covered a question that you have, make sure you let me know because again, they give me complete access and I will come back to these bikes again and again. Make sure you check out my two other reviews. I did a single review of this, a single review of that, and we'll have a whole lot more for you. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.